All right, this is called a Atwood machine. Two masses hanging from a pulley. And they give us the masses, A and B. So this one's 2.3 kilograms. And this one is 7.2. So you have an intuitive sense of which one's going to win here. We think it's going to probably accelerate clockwise. This system B is going to come down, A is going to go up probably. But we want to prove that using Newton's laws. All right, so how do you do it? Well, one technique that I always like to recommend is taking the pulley out of the equation to make things simpler. And by that, I mean you could unwrap the system and draw it as an equivalent or analogous linear system that has no pulley. And the findings that we get from this will be the same as they would be for that one. All right, so what we want to do is we want to find the forces that are acting here. Now there's going to be a force pulling our big block down. Like in reality, it pulls it this way. But I'm going to draw it in my equivalent system as pulling to the right. And that's going to be Fg, the, the force of gravity on B. And then over here, will have a force of gravity on A. But as you can see, it pulls in the opposite way. Like it makes the system want to go counterclockwise, whereas FGB makes it want to go clockwise. So that's what you want to do, is you just want to show that these forces are opposed, if you use this technique, that is. And you have that. There will also be tension forces. So the tension force will pull in the direction of the cable. So that could be just like F sub T for tension. So FT on B. And over here you got FT on A. If we draw them in the analogous picture, you would see something like this. So there's FTA and FTB. An interesting thing which helps us solve these kinds of problems is that FTA and FTB are going to be considered to be equal. So the string will pull just as hard on A as on B. In a similar way that when you push blocks together, they share one normal force between them. Like, if this is A and this is B, then this could be the normal force of A on B. And then there would be a reaction force, which is a normal force as well, of B on A. See, they would be Newton's third law pairs, and they're just always equal. And so the same kind of thing happens here. The cable just transfers the force between them it's a tension, like it's a pull instead of a push, but same concept. We don't have to work with the tension forces in this problem because they exist inside the system. And a system can't exert a net force on itself. So since one pulls to the right and one pulls to the left, it's not going to affect the overall motion of this system. They'll cancel out. So I don't even really need to worry about them. Instead, what I want to do is find the net force on the system. All right, so let's let that be the sum of the forces that are there. But we want it in regards to the x direction so that we can keep track of the signs. All right, now, how big is FGA? That's going to be 
2.3 kilograms times G, 9.8, 22.5 newtons. FGB will be 7.2 times G, 70.6 newtons. All right, so when we get our net force then, we wanna keep track of the signs. I'm gonna let the positive x direction be to the right. So that makes this a negative 22.5. This one could be a positive 70.6. So I'm getting that the net force is going to be 48.1 newtons. All right, they're asking us for the acceleration of the system. So what we'll want to do then is use Newton's second law. So A equals F net divided by the mass of the system. All right, so that's going to be 48.1 Newtons, the net force, but it acts on all the mass. All right, so it has to, it has to pull it all. So we got to do 2.3 plus 7.2. I'm getting 5.06 meters per second squared. This one wins the battle. OK, this one loses. So we are going to be accelerating in the positive x direction, which means that B does descend downward. Now they want the tension in the string. So the tension in the string is going to be found by this. You redraw and just focus on one of the masses as your system instead of the whole thing. So take mass A, for example. Uh, mass A is pulled downward with 22.5 newtons. But it's also pulled upward by a tension force. And we don't know what it is yet, but we can find it. All we have to do is figure that we would apply Newton's second law to A. And I'm going to do it with respect to the x-axis again that I established up here. But you just use mass A, and you use the acceleration of A. All right, so I could calculate the net force, or I could write that the net force is a difference of Ft minus FG on A. All right, in this way I can plug in my 22.5 and plug in my mass of 2.3 and then do my 5.06 acceleration that they have in common. You can solve for FT in that way. Looks like Ft is 34.1 Newtons. And that's going to be the same for B. You could do the calculation on it, though. And you'll see that it's the same. B feels pulled down. 
and up at the same time. But down wins. All right, so 70.6 Newtons. So just write the same kind of law for, for B. F net on B equals the mass of B times the acceleration. So FGB minus FT equals MBA. See our mass will be 7.2, 5.06, and FT comes out to 34.1-ish. So as we can see, the tension is the same for both. All right, so that is that. Uh, they ask one more question. Through what distance does the two objects move in the first two seconds? I just used D equals one half A T squared plus V I T because it's accelerating. So just use the accelerated motion formula. Uh, so one half five point oh six two seconds. We'll assume it starts from rest, 10.1 meters.